Yeah. All right, if you have your Bibles, again, Genesis chapter 18, and we did have an excellent day in the Lord, and uh, looking forward for good things. Um, Genesis 18, we're going to begin uh, in the very first verse, Genesis 18, in the very first verse, the, book, the Bible says, And the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself toward the ground and said, My Lord, if now I have found favor in thy sight, pass not away, I pray thee from thy servant. Let a little water, I pray you, be fetched, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread, and comfort ye your hearts. After that ye shall pass on. For therefore are ye come uh, to your servant, that they so do as thou hast said. And Abram hastened into his tent unto Sarah, and said, Make ready uh, quickly three measures of fine meal, knead it, and make cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran into the herd and fetched a calf, tender and good, and gave it unto a young man, and he hasted to dress it. And he and he and he took the butter, excuse me, and he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them and he stood by them under the tree and they did eat and they said unto him where is Sarah thy wife and he said behold in the tent and he said I will certainly return unto thee according to thy, the time of the wife and lo Sarah thy wife shall have a son and Sarah heard it in the tent door which was behind him now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age, and it ceased to be with Sarah, but after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself after I, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure also, my Lord being old also? Let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your goodness and watch care. Lord, we thank you for the church at Dover. Uh, we pray that you uh, withstand uh, the storms for us, that you've placed us on the solid rock. Lord, we pray that we continue to stand according to your mercy and grace. This morning we may pray that we might glean from your word the truth that you've given us. Uh, grant us your Holy Ghost today. and We'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Now we'll be preaching... On the thought this morning, what is your pleasure? Uh, what do you enjoy doing? What gives encouragement to your heart? What helps you along the way? You know, when I was a boy, uh, when I met something new, Mama taught me to always say after and you introduce uh, after they introduce yourself, say it's my pleasure. Good to meet you. Good to know you. Now, what I found after some expiratory time, that it ended up not always being a pleasure that I had met I had been true in my statement. Now, when I was a boy also, when I was a teenager, I did some things that I thought were pleasurable, and it turned out they weren't. And it turned out that there was a, that led in a way that I didn't need to go. So, our concept of pleasure and God's concept of pleasure are often two different things. Yeah. And, and what we need to do as the Lord's people is to our, align ourselves and find the things that are spiritually pleasurable and that the spirit man can enjoy and not the flesh man. I really believe that's why he teaches us with food and drink, uh, be there with content is because what we take pleasure in is things, money, houses, land, 
Uh, those are the things that we take pleasure in, and they're not of a spiritual nature. Going back to the first war, uh, the first verse, the Bible says, and the Lord appeared to him in the plains of Mamre. Now, I want you to notice a couple of things. First of all, my own opinion, I believe the triune God, the Godhead, met with him on that day. All three persons came and manifested himself unto Abraham, and he was in a strange place, but he was where God told him to be. Now, I've never been to the Middle East. I've never been over there. If the Lord takes me there, I'll go, but it's not my heart's desire. Because you know what? It's a desert land. It's not a pleasant place to be. It's not the good, rich, fertile soil on the hills of Tennessee and living between the rivers. It's nothing like that. It's not something I would enjoy. And I wonder sometimes if Abraham really enjoyed it. But he was where God told him to be. See, there's a lot of difference uh, many times in what we enjoy and the place of God that he's created for us is two different things on two different poles. And so we find, even though maybe not pleasant on the flesh, and looking for this land that was promised now for about 35 years, and he comes and meets with God. You know what? If his trip had ended there, and it did not, God fulfilled his promises, but if his trip had ended there, he left with God. What could be better? See, I believe obedience always leads to meeting with God. And disobedience always leads in another direction. And so what we as the Lord's people need to find ourselves in is following the will of God. And so we find it here, and the Lord appeared unto him in the plains of Mamre, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. Now, in that part of the country, it gets about 110 on many days, every all through the summer, and he was looking from sh for some shade and looking for some relief from the intensive heat, and he was sitting there at his tent door, a 99-year-old man at this time, waiting on the Lord. You know what? Sometimes we get sick of waiting on the Lord. You know what? That's the style of your flesh. That's the thing you're made of, is that you wear out and you get sick of waiting. Now, this is the truth, though. There's not a one of us in here. He left out when he was 75, I guess. Uh, and um, I'll say this. You ain't, you ain't waited 34 years yet. And so, be patient. The Bible says patience is a virtue. And it, it, it's one that's very difficult to learn. It's a fruit of the Spirit that, that isn't always pleasant, but it's needful with our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. And he lifted up his eyes and looked, and, and lo, three men stood by him. Uh, all three persons of the Godhead. Now, the reason that I believe they all appeared is that they were all involved in the covenant of God because they were all still uh, active all through this promise. And if you don't believe that, as you see Di Di uh, Daniel in the lion's den, he's there. Remember, he looked down oh, on Nebuchadnezzar and said, I see four men yeah. walking around. And one is like unto the Son of Man, the eternal Jesus Christ. He saw him even then. And, and so we find the Holy Ghost comes down, the Lord Jesus Christ comes down, and, and God the Father, the Lord Jehovah comes down for this very special occasion. So he lift up and he lifted up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him, and he saw them, and he ran to meet them from the tent door. He got out in the heat, he saw God, and he wanted that more than comfort. He saw God and he was willing to go through some heat to get there and he ran and fell down before him. And, and, and uh, you know what? If that had been regular angels and there's people who teach you that, yeah. he'd have been rebuked for that. Right. Right. Never was. No. Bow before him, give him worship. And he says, I got a plan. I want to worship y'all. And they weren't correct. He wasn't correct. He said, go to it. He went and got some very special things together to meet with his God, and uh, he was encouraged by it. Verse 4, Let a little water, I pray thee, pray you be fetched, and wash your feet, 
and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will fetch a morsel of bread and comfort ye on your uh, and comfort ye your hearts. And after that you shall pass on. For therefore you come to your servant. Now, I think it's very interesting toward the end of that verse, he goes, let me do all this because I know that's why he came. Wherefore, you know what? It is possible to know the will of God. He says, I know you've come for this meal and I want to make it just right. I want the bread to be right. I want Sarah to get in there and fix it just like she's supposed to. I want a, I want a healthy young lamb to slaughter and put place out before you. I want everything to be just right because I know that's why you come. You know what? Uh, when God shows up, it's no accident, is it? Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you may and it's just dry and you don't feel no presence. You, and, and it's not, listen, when God doesn't show up, it's not wasting time. It's always good to meet with the Lord's people and it's always good to open that book and to read it if nothing happens. But you know what? Oh, it's so much better when the Lord shows up, isn't it? It's so much better when He comes down and fills the empty spaces and He makes that Word once again a living Word is in above what it says itself and He accomplishes that. And so Abraham intrinsically knew because he was a saved man that God was there for a purpose and he wanted to meet with him. Verse 6, and Abraham hastened. Now, have you ever seen a 99-year-old man hasten? Uh, I, I've known a lot of men to live that old. But you know, sad truth is they didn't hasten. A lot of them Say their wheelchair was here, I did this, and that was about the extent of the mobility, moving them from one place to another. But I've seen a few that could hobble around still a little bit, just enough to get by. I won't say her name, but I knew a woman over at the nursing home. She lived to be about 101, maybe, almost 101. And when she got there, she wasn't but 95. <laughs> and she walked every day the full length of that building six times. And that was her routine. And noticed that as time went on, she started using her walker. A little bit time more went on, she started dragging that right foot. But you know what? She kept going. Understood she made the trip to about four days before she died. And, uh, but I never saw her hasten. I never saw her quick. You know what, uh, what I love about Abraham here? In the infirmities of the flesh, he was still quick to serve him. Yeah. He was still literally quick to serve the Almighty. Would to God, as, as age comes on me, that I'll still be like this, I'll be quick and I'll be, uh, I'll be intent on getting the job done. And so that's exactly what this 99-year-old man did. He quickly ran to serve God's God in that place. And Abraham ran into the herd and, and fetched uh, a, ca a calf tender and good and gave it to a young man and he hasted to dress it. And he took butter and milk and the calf which he had dressed and set it before them and he stood by them under the tree and they did eat. Now I want you to notice two things. Uh, while they're uh, while they're standing there, Abraham is there ready. There you go. He's standing in the tree just like a good waiter. Mm -hmm. And you know, if Jesus said, "You know what, Abraham? Could you put a little bread on my butter, a little butter on my bread?" He put a little bread. He picks it up and says, "There you go, Jesus." See, that's what a servant does. The he watches over things, doesn't he? And he sees the littlest bit of need and he runs to it. He didn't that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says, I believe that I'm an under-shepherd and certainly I should be available for your needs, but it is a wonderful, far more wonderful thing that the Lord of glory stands by us tending to our needs. Amen. Hallelujah. Not what we want, but what we need. Right. And so we find then that, that Abraham does this just waiting for something to be needed or requested by his God. And <laughs> there's not many people that do that today. And they, meaning the Godhead, and I love that, you know, sometimes it talks about them as individual 
persons, and then here it talks about his conglomerate, about the Godhead singular. And they said unto him, Where is Sarah thy wife? Now, man, I want you to see that that was ownership, that was responsibility. He needed to know where he was, where she was, what she was doing, right? Where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, Behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according, according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. Now, I want you to notice two things. First of all, that this is just a, a restatement of God's plan. Now, if you know it... <clears throat> First of all, he said, I will restore the time of life. You know what I literally believe that was? He's going to make them young again. Maybe not in appearances, right. but his, his, his love for his wife, his physical ability was going to change back when he was a young man and he was going to be able to father a child. He was going to crank up Sarah's body and she was start, going to start ovulating again. She was going to get ready to have that baby. You know what? Because all that's under God's hand. That's under his ability. And, and you know what? Uh, sometimes it's hard to believe that God has dominion over that, but he still does. Amen. You know what? I don't have to lose my hearing just because the doctor says I'm going to. Because, see, that's under God's dominion. And you know what? If, he, if it's his will, it may not take five years. I may uh, wake up tomorrow deaf as a hammer. But you know what? If it's not his will, I could be hearing clear as a bell to the day I'm over there. Right. See, it's all under his will. It's under his will. See, this flesh is under God. And so, therefore, the good and the bad, right? If it's his will that you have cancer, I guarantee you'll be eat up with it. And if it's his will to heal you, he'll do that too. And he wanted Sarah to be like a young woman, and he wanted Abraham to be like a young man, and they were going to conceive a child because God spoke it. Mm -hmm. See, that, that, that's what our God can do. And if we don't trust him like we should, we don't always remember uh, the truth of Sarah and Abraham, but every time, he always has a plan, he'll always accomplish it, and the reason why is because he's God. Right. And he said, I serve. Uh, and he said, verse 10, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. In other words, I'm going to make you young again. I'm going to make you have abilities that a 99-year-old man does not have. I'm going to return the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, child of son, and Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now, I want you to say it starts with they and it ends with him, singularly all interwoven into the wonderful Godhead that we serve. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. You know who the oldest person is in the world right now? Japanese woman. And yesterday she had her 118th birthday. Wow. So, you know, a lot of people uh, uh, doubt the Bible timing on some of those ages. They're just, just like my, my 52 years in about a month now. That's the very same thing, kind of in the same way we do, just as old as we are. And, and these people, the oldest person ever, besides the Bible figures that we all know about, the oldest recorded person ever, a French woman, 122 and three months when she... Can God not make people live to be 120? Sure he can. Yeah. And, and, and so we find, we find then that at this time of life, when they thought the impossible, that it was gone, that the promise was dead, that God made the impossible possible. And he's still in that business. He still accomplishes it every day in our lives when we look for it. Now, uh, and Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in, in age and it ceased to be what Sarah after the manner of women. In other words, she could no longer conceive. Modern day people, I've always heard it all, uh, uh, in my, all my life, I've heard it, the change. Uh, you know, they no longer can conceive. Uh, 
uh, in healthcare we call it postmenopausal. And Sarah had now been out 30 years plus. Now I don't know exactly because if you remember, Sarah had a, conti a continuance of youth yeah. even then because she was a pretty woman at 65. Mm -hmm. Very attractive to men. But the Bible says here we cannot deny it, everything had stopped. Mm -hmm. Then God moved in. He, you know why? Why he was one reason he waited so long. He wanted everything to stop. He wanted this child to be all about him, and that's exactly what happened. Now, so we find then, uh, we find then that this was accomplished in their nothingness of the flesh. Verse twelve. Therefore, Sarah laughed laughed at the will of God, laughed at the plan of God, and you get down on Sarah, that name means princess, and, and you get down on the princess if you want to, but you know what? This is the truth. You would have laughed too. <laughs> right? Yeah. You would have laughed and said, there is no way. Brother Junior, uh, Donna, does Donna need a little baby brother? <laughs> is God able? I'm curious. See, we've got to get back to the point of believing God. Yeah. Just believe His promises. Believe they're real. And, and, and so we find that uh, much like us, and Sarah, no doubt at least a little bit in the flesh, uh, you know, she may believe it in the spirit, but it sure made her laugh in the flesh that she, at, at 90 years old, would have a son the next year. Yep. And therefore, Sarah laughed within herself. <laughs> saying, after I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord being old also. Now, I want you to notice two things. First of all, um, she said, shall, shall this thing come to pass? But then I want you to notice that little word, shall I find pleasure? Now, I really believe that's twofold. You know, we live in a day and age. It is a pleasure to have children. If you don't take anything home from this, you uh, you remember this. It's a pleasure to have children. And don't you go about interrupting God's plan for man and wife because their purpose is still to fulfill the filling of the earth. That That is... That's what marriage is about. That's what parenthood is about. Uh, we're still accomplishing the command that God gave to Noah and his sons. And, and that is to refulfill, refill the earth. And certainly we should still be about that father's business. Now, with that said, that was the promise that was given her. And she was ready to move on it. See, you know what the problem is today? We're not ready to move on it. She said, I want to be pleasurable to the Lord. You know, like I said, it's my pleasure. Good to meet you. It was her pleasure. At, 90, at this point, she's 89. At 90 years old, to do the will of the Almighty. Is that your pleasure? Uh, me and Brother King's often talked about the differences <coughs> in our ages. Uh, it ought to still be my pleasure just as much. Just because he's 32 years younger than me doesn't mean it should be any more pleasurable for him than it is for me. You're, you're eyeballing 30, right? It shouldn't be any more pleasurable for him than it is for you. Yeah. Right? She said, man, it's a pleasure. It's a wonderful thing to know that I am going to be used of God when there's no ability left in me. Now, child verse might not my thing. I'm glad Donna likes it. More power to her, right? <laughs> but I've seen a few born. Uh, I've seen all mine. And I think I saw nine deliveries when I was in nursing school. That's 12 children. You know what? They's all a little bit different, and none of it was exactly pleasant. You know what I'm saying? So what she was endowing herself to wasn't necessarily, woo, this is going to be fun. At 90 years old, I'm going to have a child. woo -hoo! Because it was difficult, right? God's will often is. 
God's perfect will, not his permissive will, God's perfect will often hurts the flesh. Right? But you know, that's where we ought to be. Uh, God's perfect will is never prideful. It's always uh, embarrassing to some extent. Now, Mama, I, I didn't know these people, but Mama told me about them uh, coming up. There was a young girl who was the mama, uh, who was bringing forth the child. Her mother was pregnant with her sister, and her grandmother was pregnant with her great aunt. <laughs> Three generations all had a child about the same age. You think that old great grandmother, that that was a pleasure for her to have a child the same age as her great granddaughter? You see what I'm saying? They all grew up as friends. <laughs> but Sarah took that out. And Mom said this woman, she, uh, a man's age, her hair was all, all white, and, uh, and people, of course, jeered a little bit at her. I think she's about 50, which to me, that's not no real big age, but I guess if you start a family, you know, it, it, it'd get a hold of your attention. And uh, there she is having, having a child. And people, you know, I'm sure when she came out, back in those days, they didn't have maternity clothes like they do today, but I'm sure you couldn't miss it. You, you know, I wonder if she walked proudly besides her daughter and beside her granddaughter. They all three expecting, or was she a little bit embarrassed? I'd say the latter, wouldn't you? I don't know that, but I mean, it, it would be a very strange thing to have a child the same age as your great grandchild. But I want you to see that Sarah wasn't at all like that at 89. Okay. It's my pleasure to do this for you, Lord. What else can I accomplish in thy holy name? Yeah, the plan sounds funny to me, but you know what? Be it so unto me. That's what Mary said when she found out she was with child of the Holy Ghost. You know what? Uh, when, when God presented his plan for her life, she wasn't, like, hey, you know what? That's going to put me in the stoning category. That's going to put me, uh, I'm going to humiliate Joseph. We're going to engage. And he ain't going to be his baby. He don't know nothing about it. And she says, even so be it unto me. You know what? That took a lot of courage on Mary's part. Yeah. See, we as the United States, had, when I was a boy, it was still always the electric chair. And, you know, people said, man, that's cool. Now we have lethal injection. Go in and start an IV and whoop, and, and out into eternity. But then to get the people's attention, execution was public. And sometimes I wonder if we went back to that if that would be a better thing. Yeah. Because it gets your attention, wasn't it? And, and not that it was good or bad, it's just history in Stewart County. Uh, there was a slave insurrection down at the Bear Spring Furnace in 1850, and 17 black men were hung in Court Square all at one time. I don't agree with that at all, but it got their attention. You see what I'm saying? When, when people are living disobedient in the Jewish economy, you know what? It got your attention. Uh, and see, old Mary would have been the first one stoned for that. And so she was taking on a big responsibility. She was taking on an eager thing when she said, be it so unto me. Give me what you got. I want to be in your will. And, and so that's very much what was accomplished in Sarah, uh, not fearing the word of the Lord, uh, maybe a little comical to her as, as the far as the flesh is concerned, but she accomplished it. And you know what? She lived to see that boy grown. Yeah. If, you, if you follow the age of Sarah, she got to see him till, she was about 30, till he was about 37 years old before she died. And then we thought, uh, and you thought all was done, but whatever God did for Abraham lasted, and he had six more boys. Yeah, right? right? Mm -hmm. See, God can do what he wants to do. Yeah, yeah. But are you yielding to God's plan? Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Is it a pleasure to serve him? Or is it a difficulty? When you come down to the house of God, are you, whoo, another day to be with the Lord's people, to meet with the mighty God of the universe? Or are you like, oh man, Larry, I'll get on to me. He'll give me one of those phone calls if I don't show up. <laughs> right? It's either a pleasure or it's not, is it? It's either comfortable and glad or it's boring, uh, you know, one way to the other. But I want you to see that Sarah found this as pleasure in her old age to do exactly what God would have her to do. Now go with me to the book of Acts. Acts chapter 26. As Brother Kraft says, now I've got my introduction done. Mm-hmm. Acts 26 in the first verse. Acts 26, in the very first verse, the Bible says, Then Agrippa said unto Paul, Thou art permitted to speak for thyself. Then Paul stretched forth the, uh, the hand and answered, I think myself happy, King Agrippa. Now I want you to get the full thrust of this. But see, because Agrippa had his life in his hand. Agrippa had the the ability to say, you need to execute Paul right now. Or to say, you know what, this man doesn't even wrong. He had it in his hand. Now, if you were facing that, would you count yourself happy? What would be your take on that? Now, Sarah said she found pleasure in this. And you know what? Oh, Paul did too. He says, I count myself happy. I'm pleasurable that I made one more time. Now, this might be the last time, but I'm going to tell you what happened to me on the road to Damascus, and maybe you'll have a little bit better understanding of how crazy I am. Say, so do you count yourself happy this morning? I find today that the bulk majority of people that call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that say, yes, I'm saved. Yes, I've been placed in one of the Lord's churches. And yet they go around with a sour face like they can't stand life. You know, I have a great deal of, uh, of problems if they say they count themselves happy. <clears throat> you know why there's so much displeasure in the world today? There's no happy people. There, there's no people that take pleasure in the will of God. You know what? That's what I want for 2021 is to be able to take pleasure in the will of God for my life. Say, it's a pleasure for me. You know what? And again, I think God has relieved me of it, but if I go death, I want to say, man, I'm glad to go death. It's pleasure for me. It's what God wants for me, so it's what I want for me. It's pleasure. You know uh, I, I saw this oh, when I was praying on uh, uh, New Year's Day here in my office at work. I was listening to different songs and stuff, and this one came up, and it blessed my heart so much I showed it to Kenny. And I really wasn't watching the video at first. I was just listening to the song. And, uh, it told a story about a missionary heading into Mexico. And this missionary uh, got stopped at the gate of his city. First car they drug, drug the driver out, the... Uh, uh, the drug ban in that place literally beat him to death. Second car in front of him, drug him out on the ground, beat him to death. Got to him, he was third in the line, there was two behind him. Put his hand on the door and walked over to the next one. Drug that fourth one out and beat him to death. <laughs> but God spared him. Then the police came, uh, fight ensued, gun battle, and the whole time, Song playing on his on his tape player when he went out until uh, the, the the guy said seven hours. I can't imagine the gun battle lasting that long, but that's just what this guy said. The whole time this song called He Knows My Name was playing from his radio. The whole time. You know what? I wonder if he counted it pleasure. And boy, it's hard. He had children. He had children like Bella. Drug out in that ditch. they drug over in a ditch to try to save their life. I wonder if he counted the pleasure. I wonder if he counted the mockery of pleasure. I wonder if he, he counted the risk of life of pleasure. Mm-hmm. And, and so we find that huh, in the face of death, Paul says, I count, I, I count it 
<laughs> he, he says, it's pleasure. It, it, it is a good thing. I count myself happy. Thank you for letting me speak for myself. Now drop down to verse 12 of uh, the, um, the same text. And the Bible says this, whereupon, meaning as he, was, as he was walking along on the road to Damascus, whereupon as I went to Damascus with the authority and commission from the chief priest, at midday, O king, about noon, at midday, O king, I saw in the way a bright light from heaven above the brightness of the sun. It was above that, it was above the best light, the brightest light I've ever seen, shining right about me. And them that journeyed with me, and we we were all falling to the earth. I heard a voice speaking unto me and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Second time he quoted that. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. But rise, stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things which I will appear unto thee, delivering thee uh, from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom I now send thee, to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light, and from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith in me. Yeah. Now I want you to see, uh, he had a plan, didn't he? And he said, Agrippa, I'm telling you what the plan was. This is how I met the Lord Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus. You know what? I have a, I have a, hmm, a concern for people that can't say, you know what? The Lord saved me. Mm -hmm. And thus and so it happened. Yeah. You know, uh, Lydia's wasn't remarkable. But you know what? She can say, you know what? I was down there with one of them women, and Paul came by, and the Lord opened my heart. Yeah. It, it wasn't bright lights. It wasn't being thrown to the ground like old Paul was. She never saw the Lord Jesus Christ in flesh like Paul did. She had a testimony. Right? And, and, and so we find then that how we count our blessings, how we count things that come to pass, all hinges. That's what's going to make you happy or sad. And let me read one more place from the ministry of Paul, and we're going to close. In 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 11. 2 Corinthians 11, and we're going to begin reading in verse 23. 2 Corinthians 11, beginning in verse 23. Paul writing to the church of Corinth and still bidding them a testimony, even from a prison. He says, are they ministers of Christ? <laughs> I speak as a fool. I'm the more. And labor is more abundant. What are you doing? What are you getting up to? And labor is more abundant. <laughs> in stripes, being beaten with a cat of nine tails, in stripes, above measure. In prison, more frequent. In deaths, oft. Of the Jews, five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned. Thrice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day have I been in the deep. In journeys, often. In perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils of my own countrymen, in perils by the heathen, in perils in the sea, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils in perils among false brethren, in wearying, weariness, in, pa in painfulness, in watchings, often. In hunger and thirst and fastings often, in cold and nakedness, 
besides all those that are without, which cometh upon me daily, the care of all the churches. Now, I want you to see that would have been a miserable thing. Remember one of the shipwrecks? Uh, they was out there in the middle of the sea, and uh, the storms had been bad, getting worse. And he said, listen, and they didn't ask him for a while, but finally he says, y'all listen to me. The ship's going to be lost. Yeah. But there'll be no loss of life right. if you listen to me. Mm -hmm. Because he had the will of God. Now he's recanting, remembering all that that had happened to him. And saying, listen, it's been a good trip. Mm -hmm. See, uh, we live in a day and age where I believe people largely focus on the negative. Listen, it, it, it's never half full. It's all, it's always half empty. Mm -hmm. You met those people, ain't you? And and Matthew's like that, and he said, "Yeah, I'm just a realist." I said, "Well, it's just as real that it's half full, right?" And if it's three fourths done, it's not three fourths empty. It's a fourth full, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, see, it is the flesh tendency to bend to the world negative. Yep, that's exactly right. So when we're like that, I'll guarantee you, you're in the flesh. But when you say, look, whew, I think uh, Brother King was saying, man, it's a lot of bread here today, and there he is, Donna did one of her best, and it's all kind of, you know what? We have bread to eat. Amen. <laughs> right? It may not be anything else to do. I think about Donna got, brought some soup that was given to her, so look out. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, but, Amen. Right? Glory to God. How you gonna look at it? How you gonna look at this year? Man, we get the crazy man for president. Well, you know what? We may be. Only thing I can say for this reason, I have raised up favor. Amen. Alright. All depends on how you look at it. Yep. So I count myself happy this year. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I count myself glad. Hallelujah. It's pleasure. Yes. You know, Amen. If they come in tomorrow and take us all out. All I can say is it's been a really good trip. Yeah. So I even look at it. Amen. Is it going to be, oh, it's me? Or is it going to say, blessed be the name of the Lord? Even so, it be unto me. Which yeah. one are you going to do? Amen. In the light of being stoned? In the light of uh, uh, being shipwrecked? What are you going to do? We need to be like that, don't we? Listen, you talk about your depression running out the window. It goes so fast you don't know what, and you don't know it's ever there. Right. Right? Yeah.